OmniXpecta is designed for analytical problem solving. In other words, to help you answer the question, what is the chemical makeup of this material? Our traditional search operations provide state-of-the-art tools for identifying materials by comparing the unknown spectrum with commercial libraries or any spectra you've tagged as search references. But what if your sample material is a mixture? Mixture analysis is typically handled by experts, but even with a skilled analyst, the requirements to repeatedly search, subtract, and interpret mixture spectra add a subjective component to the results. SPECTA's exclusive algorithm for analyzing mixtures eliminates the extra steps and the guesswork, so every analyst generates the same expert result. SPECTA offers two approaches to mixture analysis, multi-component search and contaminant search. Information about SPECTA's other search techniques and general features of the Identify view are provided in other videos. This video focuses on tools for searching mixtures. All of the search tools are located in the Identify view. Select Multi-Component Search when you don't know anything about your sample except that it is a mixture. The search algorithm uses an iterative technique to find the combination of spectra that best matches your unknown. I'll show you an example. This spectrum is from the case of a computer monitor. Housings for electrical devices must meet strict specifications so the formulation is carefully scrutinized and documented. Now I'll open the multi-component search task and select a couple of libraries that might have compounds I'm looking for. This polymer and additives library looks good. And here's another one with polymer additives and plasticizers. I'll use this slider to specify two components in my sample. Now I'll click this green arrow to run the search. The search results appear in the result pane. Each match is a set of two spectra. The found spectra for the best match appear here. Information about each match appears here. The best match is listed first. My unknown spectrum is still in the workspace pane. The other spectrum in the workspace is the composite spectrum for the first match. The composite is a computer-generated spectrum that represents the found reference spectra with absorbance values adjusted to approximate the relative amounts present in the unknown sample. Remember that unlike other search techniques, this algorithm does not depend on residual spectra, so we avoid introducing artifacts and distortions through spectral subtraction. If the match is from a spectral library, this column shows the library name, and this one gives the index number of the library spectrum. The match number indicates how well the composite spectrum matches the unknown. The cumulative value shows the contribution of each reference spectrum to the overall match. The composite percent is a scaling factor indicating the amount of each found reference represented in the composite spectrum. Note that because library spectra are often normalized and other reference spectra may not be, the composite values are relative. Don't interpret the information quantitatively. As with any spectral search, these numbers are determined by the quality of the compared spectra, which may have been collected on different instruments with different settings. Resolution is the most important. As a result, don't expect all match values to be at or near 100. I'll show you how to use SPECTA's many display options to visually compare search results with your unknowns to verify the quality of the match. Let's take a closer look. Here is a region where some differences are present between the original spectrum and the main component. When you include both references as represented by the composite spectrum in the workspace pane, you can see that the agreement is excellent. If you change the middle section to offset mode, you can see that the first reference in the set, the base plastic, is missing all these peaks in the middle range. The second material clearly contributes here. Now I'll select Terrain View, which shows the contribution of each found reference to the composite and compares it with the unknown. The bottom color represents the contribution of the first major component in the match set, the base plastic. The next layer shows the additional contribution from the second component. So at a given point, we add the contribution from the first and second component to get their combined contribution. The top edge of this layer is equivalent to the composite spectrum. The solid line at the top is the original spectrum of the unknown sample. Again, you can see how each component contributes and how the composite accounts for all the major peaks. 
If peaks are missing, you can increase the maximum component setting and rerun the search, or try using other libraries. If I click here to bring up the second match set, and the third, you can see they are also close, but each is incrementally more unlike the unknown. This exercise confirms that the first set of found reference spectra is clearly the best match. To conclude, the first component is my base plastic. But what is the second one? If I right-click here and choose Search the Web, and then select the second component, the web search identifies it as a brominated flame retardant and a regulated material. Use contaminant search when you know the main component of a homogeneous mixture, perhaps from your production line or supplier, but the material is contaminated by something else or by multiple things. The contamination could be from an environmental source or from an additive such as a plasticizer or flame retardant. Contaminant search first removes the spectral information from the known component so it can focus on the unexpected constituents. I'll demonstrate how SPECTA's identify tools work together to quickly solve this kind of problem. This spectrum is from ethylene vinyl acetate, a common packaging material which I will call EVA. The factory specification requires 18% of the EVA component in the final product. Initial testing showed the material was out of specification. Something else is present. I'll start by running a spectral search on the sample to confirm the main component. For libraries, I'll leave the two we used in the previous example and add my Search Favorites folder, which contains a series of reference spectra collected from the same production line and analyzed using the same spectrometer and accessory as the contaminated sample. Taking this precaution ensures an exact comparison and produces better results. The search results confirm 18% EVA as the main component. The high match number indicates we might be finished, but the visual comparison shows otherwise. For example, when I overlay the best match with my original spectrum, I see significant non-random differences in several regions. This indicates something else may be present. I already suspected this because my quality check failed. Here's where contaminant search makes things easy. I'll right-click the top hit and choose contaminant search this known component. SPECTA opens the contaminant search task and sets up my 18% EVA search hit as the known component. Now I'll click here to search for the contaminant. The search results appear in the result pane. Each match is a set of two spectra. The best match is listed first. The first component listed in italic text is the 18% EVA reference. The second component is the contaminant. Note that for the contaminant search, the workspace pane is automatically hidden. The spectra in the result pane are usually sufficient for this analysis. I'll use these controls to zoom in for a closer look. This pane shows the sample spectrum without the contributions from the known component, essentially a residual spectrum. The other spectrum is a composite of the found contaminants. This display is most helpful when there are multiple contaminants. This pane shows the spectra of all the found contaminants, one spectrum in our example. If you want to compare a found spectrum with what remains of the sample spectrum, right-click and choose Overlay. The composite spectrum disappears. Or you may prefer Terrain View, which shows the contribution of each found component to the composite and compares it with the remaining sample spectrum. This is the same view as with multi-component search, except the sample spectrum does not include the known component. Choose Stack to go back to the previous view. SPECTA lets you configure and reconfigure the display to show exactly what you want. Note that you can capture each display for placement in a report by clicking this button. The first match contains 18% EVA and erosilamide. With an impressive match number that is consistent with my visual comparison, I can be confident that erosilamide is indeed the contaminant. If you search for information on this compound, you'll find it has many uses, including as a release agent for plastics. It's the oily substance that keeps your plastic food storage bags from sticking together. The contaminant could be from poorly cleaned rollers used in the manufacturing process. The low composite value for the contaminant confirms SPECTA's ability to identify contaminants even when present in very small amounts, less than 1% in this case. Omnic SPECTA works the way you do, driven by function rather than features. 
The software does the work for you with exciting new tools for searching mixtures that are fast and accurate. Plus, you never have to consider who performed the analysis. OmniExpecta gives consistent answers from one operator to the next. I hope you found this information helpful. Thanks for watching. For information about other features of OmniExpecta, please view the other videos or consult the help topics.